People are talking and guess who they're talking about. You. Word on the street is spreading like wildfire, and it's time you knew the truth. People aren't just noticing you, they're highly drawn to you. That's right, everywhere you go, eyes are on you, and everyone is curious. What makes you so magnetic? Stay tuned, because today we're uncovering exactly why you're the center of attention, and trust me, you'll be amazed. Starting with the first date card, it's fitting because, even before beginning this reading, I had a strong feeling that the buzz around town is all about how in demand you are. For whoever's watching this, you're someone others are eager to meet and get to know on a deeper level. Now, you might not be feeling that way about yourself right now, especially if there haven't been many recent approaches, but the reality is people find you incredibly attractive and desirable. Some people hold back because they can see how focused you are and don't want to interrupt your flow. Others may feel they're not quite on your level. In the past, you may have drawn in people who didn't appreciate you as much as you deserved, but now, knowing your worth, you're choosing to wait for better and more aligned opportunities. With the energy of the star card, you're stepping into the spotlight and leaving behind any influences that once made you settle for less. I sense that many of you are ready to come out of your shell and embrace this new chapter with confidence. Some of you have been keeping to yourselves, maybe after a breakup or simply needing time to recharge. During this period, people likely sensed your energy and hesitated to approach you. Whether it was their situation, yours, or a mix of both, someone wanted to approach you or ask you out but didn't feel the timing was right. They may have even stepped back, thinking they didn't stand a chance. But now, there's something different about your energy. It's magnetic, drawing people in and showing them you're worth pursuing. I see either you or someone around you cutting ties with negative or toxic influences, represented by the villain card. Many of you have been deeply focused on tackling personal challenges, whether through healing or your work, and you might not have noticed just how much attention you're attracting. Right now, you're highly sought after. People want to date you, connect with you, and the word is out that you're a true catch. Your high standards are also well known, and people admire that you won't settle or put up with any red flags. People who have dated you in the past have come to realize they can't bring the same behaviors into a relationship with you as they might with others. You've faced situations where people tried to pull you down, but you're no longer tolerating any of that. Your focus now is on manifesting healing and bringing in healthier connections, whether in love, friendships, or professional relationships. There's a fresh energy surrounding you. Some of you may have physically relocated, bringing a positive shift, while others are revisiting familiar routines but with a completely renewed perspective. Either way, people are noticing your transformation, you dedicated time to yourself, and now you're re-emerging stronger and more empowered. After taking a much-needed break, you're stepping back into your power, showcasing your talents and creativity in both your personal and professional life. It's as if you're back in the spotlight, and people are taking notice. Some are even wondering, is that really them? Not that you ever looked anything but great, but it's clear you needed time to recharge. Now that you've distanced yourself from toxic people and situations, your energy feels lighter and more free-spirited. You've been through a lot, especially with those who attempted to control or undermine you. As someone with a naturally healing presence, you've handled these challenges gracefully, and people have seen your resilience and growth, adding to your appeal. There's someone who has their eye on you and just the thought of you gives them butterflies. The word is out that you're not easily won over, and people respect that. Your high standards are well known, and it's clear to everyone. For some of you, there may be someone interested in you who has children, or perhaps you do. Either way, you have a full life, or dating may not be your top priority right now. People understand that approaching you requires respect for your time and energy. However, it seems you're opening up to new connections after doing some profound healing. Someone from your past, who may have previously held back from competing for your attention, is now feeling more confident about reaching out. They know that to earn your heart, they need to bring genuine effort and sincerity. Your energy is stronger than ever, and people know they'll have to impress you to get close. You're no longer settling for anything less than you deserve or letting anyone exert control over you. If someone is serious about building a relationship with you, they'll need to bring stability in every way, emotionally, mentally, and physically, 
and prove they're loyal and honest. This shift in you hasn't gone unnoticed. If you're currently seeing someone, others might even be asking them, how did you catch their attention? This person likely feels incredibly lucky to have you in their life and is enthusiastic about moving the relationship forward. There's definitely someone interested in you right now, and they're a bit nervous about it. They've been getting advice, and the message is clear, you're not easy to win over. They know they need to bring their best to make an impression. Mutual friends may even be encouraging them to step up, especially if their first impression didn't quite hit the mark. It's a bit like that Britney Spears line, you want a Maserati? You better work, because you're absolutely worth the effort. It's not just about financial stability, it's about being fully present and intentional. Right now, you're likely focused on your career or self-improvement, whether through personal growth, enhancing your well-being, or caring for loved ones. You hold yourself to high standards, and you're happy on your own. So, if someone wants to be a part of your life, they need to prove they're worthy of it. People are noticing that being with you requires real effort, not just to win your heart, but to keep up with you. You probably get plenty of attention and may go on first dates, but not everyone makes it to the second. The energy you radiate is powerful, there's something magnetic about you, beyond just physical attraction. It takes a special kind of person, perhaps a true soulmate, to capture your attention. The person interested in you feels a strong connection and is prepared to put in the work to grow, but they're also aware that you have options and high standards. You're not settling, and they recognize that they'll need to rise to meet your level. While you may believe we encounter many soulmates in life, a divine counterpart stands apart, they bring a unique depth of growth and alignment. A divine counterpart is someone deeply committed to their own inner work and evolving alongside you, with timing and connection guided by God and your angels. They care for you too deeply to allow just anyone into your life. They want someone who will genuinely support your purpose, recognizing that you're meant to lead. While a soulmate may still play a significant role, if they're not aligned with their higher self or your needs, they might not be right for you at this moment. Here's where free will comes into play. You might have several soulmates interested, but you're seeking more than just a connection. You're looking for an equal, a true divine counterpart. Many of you have likely prayed, saying, I don't want just anyone. I'd rather stay single than be with someone who drains me or pulls me off my path. Your angels heard that prayer, and they may have guided you into a season of solitude or hermit mode, giving you time to heal and grow, aligning you with the right person at the perfect time. Now that you're emerging from this phase, it's clear to those around you that you're radiating a renewed, vibrant energy. People are taking notice, and you're drawing the attention of more than a few admirers. There's one person in particular who's very aware that you have options, and they're focused on bettering themselves to become the partner you truly deserve. They're committed to their own growth, career, and personal development because they understand the kind of person it takes to stand beside you. Whether they're younger or older, you now have choices, and people recognize your worth. You're no longer accepting anything less than respect, fairness, and genuine love. It's clear that you've shifted your approach, releasing any need to control outcomes or use the law of attraction to force things. Instead, you're letting go and trusting in divine timing, allowing God and your angels to bring the right person to you when it's meant to be. You've pulled back your energy, confident that the right person will step up and show you they're the partner you've been waiting for. As I've grown older, I've come to understand that when searching for a life partner, whether it's a husband or wife, you're not looking to mold someone into that role, you're looking for someone who already embodies those qualities. When you meet someone who naturally has that energy, you know you're on the right track. Instead of trying to force things, it's essential to let your angels guide you, revealing who's truly meant for you. Being on a spiritual journey, especially as a light worker, can sometimes feel at odds with modern spirituality, which often promotes the idea that we can control every aspect of our lives. But that's not entirely true. You're on a path guided by divine forces, protected and supported from above. Even during times of solitude or hermit mode, you're never truly alone. It's all part of your growth journey. Now, it's as if you're emerging from that hermit zone and stepping into a fresh, exciting new chapter. Your angels are signaling that you're ready to open up to new connections, people, and opportunities in your career. 
fresh possibilities and networking are on the horizon. However, the time you spent in solitude was crucial. It gave you the clarity needed to recognize what isn't aligned with your path. You may have encountered karmic relationships where there was a sense of control, but those connections weren't meant to last. When the time was right, those individuals naturally faded away. As for your divine counterpart, there's no need to fix, change, or force anything. They will be their true, authentic self, fully embodying their divine masculine or feminine energy, and they will be drawn to you naturally. This is a reassuring sign that your angels are working behind the scenes, guiding both you and your future partner towards mutual growth. You can trust that they're preparing the right person for you, just as they're preparing you for them. It's exciting to realize that more than one person might feel they're the right fit for you, but ultimately, the decision is yours based on all that you've learned. Many of you have grown weary of karmic relationships, but those experiences were crucial in showing you what you truly don't want. Now, with your growth, you have a much clearer understanding of your authentic desires. As you continue to evolve spiritually and professionally, you're realizing that you don't want anyone to control or distract you from your path. Your angels are guiding you, and there are people who are noticing the progress you've made. Others see you as a prize, and it feels like there's competition for your attention. However, your focus on self-love and spiritual growth makes you highly selective about who you allow into your life. When someone truly captures your heart, your loyalty runs deep. Some of you may already be in relationships, and others are observing, waiting for any misstep. You know your worth, and if you're not receiving what you need, you won't hesitate to set boundaries and move forward. This is your Six of Wands moment, success is just around the corner, whether in love, career, or public recognition. More opportunities and success are on the horizon for you. You've navigated difficult, hermit, phases and challenges, but those experiences have been essential for your growth. Now, as you step into your power, expect to face competition and challenges, but see them as signs of your strength. In relationships, you're attracting higher quality connections, becoming more discerning about what you're willing to accept. Some may hold back, understanding they need to grow first, while others may test your boundaries. It's important to remember that even if someone is part of your divine path, if they don't align with your standards, it's okay to step away. This principle extends to every area of your life as you protect your growth and values. You're seeking a partner who can genuinely support and share the load in your busy life. You've laid the foundation for success in your career, home, and personal life, and while the full rewards may not be evident yet, your angels assure you that your hard work is about to pay off. Stay focused on what matters most and trust the journey. People are beginning to notice your strength, resilience, and integrity, highlighting your incredible positivity. Many see you as their ideal partner, but some are hesitant to approach, either due to fear of rejection or waiting for the right moment. As you enter this phase of success, with new opportunities unfolding, the presence of two aces signals that you're stepping into a whole new level. You may also have a Leo showing special interest in you. Your positive energy and faith are soaring, infusing your life with renewed optimism. You've learned to prioritize yourself and embrace asking for the love you deserve, which attracts people who genuinely want to give rather than take. By clearing out toxic relationships, you've made space for authentic connections, and someone who is interested in you may be doing the same to make room for real love. This person is working hard to improve their life, particularly financially, motivated by your support and presence. Your leadership qualities inspire those around you, sparking passion and purpose in your friendships and connections. Many see you as a teacher or guide, and you may feel a calling to share your wisdom. As you step into your true self, expect new opportunities and relationships that align with your growth. You're drawing in partnerships that are both spiritually and financially abundant, attracting like-minded individuals who share your values and vision. While someone in your life may still be working through personal or family karma that holds them back, abundance in love and life is on the way for you. This person has likely been discussing their feelings about you with a close friend or family member as they navigate their personal challenges, whether it's karma, family issues, or other obstacles. They're distancing themselves from negative influences and reflecting on the advice they've received, which has helped them gain clarity about their feelings for you. 
They may be considering reaching out to address their personal issues and pursue a relationship with you. In the past, you set boundaries with this person because they weren't ready to offer the commitment you were seeking. Your decision to step back has caused them to reflect deeply, triggering a period of introspection. They may now realize how much they miss you and feel lost without your presence. There's talk that you're no longer accepting half-hearted efforts or unfulfilled promises. Your past relationship experiences have sharpened your ability to read energy, enabling you to identify who meets your standards. This growth has empowered you to uphold high expectations in your relationships, and others are beginning to recognize the immense value you bring into their lives. What are you right now? What are you fighting? What are you fighting for? What are you fighting against? We're broken people living in a broken world, which means we're all fighting something. It's just how life works until heaven. For some of you, maybe it's fighting for freedom from things like anxiety, depression, insecurity, loneliness, and self-doubt. For others, maybe you're fighting for a loved one, praying for them to experience freedom, to find Jesus, to experience life change. Some of you might be praying about starting a family, while others are battling to keep one intact, whether it's fighting for your marriage, a dream, or against a difficult diagnosis. Life can be challenging, and it's easy to feel worn out. Sometimes, we get disheartened, frustrated, and tempted to give up, even if only for a little while. We might think, I'm just done. I'm done praying because nothing seems to change. I'm done trusting God because it doesn't feel like He's listening. I'm done believing that He has a plan for me. I'm done trying to obey, to give, to serve, to show up, to invite people to church, to share my faith, my story, or to make a difference in this world. Nothing seems to be going my way. I'm done. Have you ever felt like that? I know I have. Paul addressed similar feelings when he wrote to Timothy. Timothy was struggling, feeling overwhelmed and ready to give up. Paul's message to him was clear, stop it. You weren't given a spirit of fear or timidity. The term Paul used actually refers to cowardice. He was telling Timothy, stop acting like a coward. God has equipped you with a fighter's spirit. You have been given a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. To fully experience the plans that God has for you, you need to take a step similar to what I've done. It begins with this, you must fight the good fight. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. So, Timothy, you need to fight the fight too. It won't be easy, but you're capable of it. Fight the fight and finish the race. Paul added, I have fought the fight, and I have finished the race. Understand this, because there is opposition and because you're human, there will be moments when you feel like giving up. But you have the choice to persevere. Many people start strong, but only a few follow through to the end. If you want to embrace all that God has for you, you need to resolve. I know I'll face challenges because I have a warrior spirit within me. I can't control the obstacles that come my way, but I can control whether I give up. I am committed to finishing this race. Remember, do not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. You can't give up. You need to stay the course. The faithful actions we take, even the small, consistent steps over time, have a profound impact. Being diligent in the little things may seem minor, but it's actually a significant part of the journey. Each day, we're in a battle, sometimes just a battle to maintain our sanity. But you must keep fighting. Remember this, victory is always on the other side of a struggle. It's consistently found beyond the fight. As Galatians 6 verse 9 puts it, let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the right time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's natural to feel tempted to quit when faced with setbacks or exhaustion, especially when it seems like your efforts go unrecognized or unappreciated. But don't let weariness stop you. Keep pushing forward, even when it's tough, because the reward is always worth the fight. But we persevere because it's the right thing to do. In Galatians 5 verse 7, the Apostle Paul asked the church, You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? If the devil can get you discouraged and keep you in that state, he can prevent you from continuing. That's the real challenge. 
Theodore Roosevelt once said, Courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have the strength. Even when you feel you don't have the energy to continue, you must keep moving forward. How many times have you told yourself or others, I'm done. I can't keep going. It's easy to become disheartened when things don't progress as quickly as we'd like. But it's crucial to push through, even when the road seems long and challenging. Stay strong and don't lose heart in doing good, because in time, you will reap the rewards if you don't give up. There is a promise of a harvest. So, keep your faith and stay committed. Remember those times when you were absolutely certain that your vision for your life was going to come to fruition. You were unstoppable, determined that nothing or no one would deter you from achieving your goals. It felt like it was already within your grasp. But what happened to that certainty? The Bible reflects this sentiment with a question. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom is the vision I want to live by. Stand firm in this conviction and don't let yourself be burdened again by the weight of old constraints. The message is clear, you were doing so well. Remember who or what caused you to stray from the truth. What changed? This kind of influence doesn't come from the one who called you. You were on the right path, had a clear vision, but then real life intervened. As the famous quote by Mike Tyson goes, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This quote, from an interview before his fight with Evander Holyfield, is a powerful reminder that adversity is a part of life. The interviewer noted that this insight applies far beyond boxing, to any area of life, whether it's health issues, job losses, poor investments, or everyday frustrations. What truly matters is how you respond to these challenges, not the challenges themselves. We all want to feel like we're making progress, doing well, and making a difference. We want to sense that we're moving forward, having an impact, and making strides. That's a natural desire, and it's important to keep that perspective alive as you navigate life's ups and downs. So, what happens next? Life throws its punches. I've mentioned Mike Tyson's quote so many times, including just yesterday during a chat with friends. I said, Mike Tyson's line about fighting resonates so well, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. It's a perfect analogy for life, isn't it? We all have grand plans, but then life hits us hard, and suddenly we're faced with, well, that wasn't part of the plan. What do I do now? In those moments, it's easy to feel like everything is falling apart and consider giving up. But if you look at anyone who has achieved something significant or is pursuing a meaningful goal, you'll find they've all faced their share of setbacks and challenges. The common thread among those who accomplish great things and live abundant lives is their resilience. They all experienced difficulties and were punched in the mouth by life, but they didn't let those setbacks stop them. Instead, they persevered through adversity and kept moving forward. Here's what you won't find on the list of keys to success. A life free of challenges, a perfectly rigid plan that always went as expected without needing any flexibility or adaptation. Does anyone actually achieve success this way? Does anyone succeed by making excuses, blaming others, and playing the victim while rarely following through on their commitments? Is anyone's story about everyone in their life always agreeing with them and supporting them without exception? Or is it about achieving everything solo, without any help? No one who lives a significant life has avoided the walls of reality, where things don't go as planned, and they had to adjust their strategies. Everyone has faced moments of disappointment and had to overcome blame and excuses. What sets apart those who achieve greatness and find true fulfillment from those who often feel empty is their perseverance. It's their determination to keep pushing forward, their grit to see things through, and their refusal to give up. This relentless drive and willingness to adapt and persist, despite obstacles, is what truly makes the difference between the average and the extraordinary. Pastor Craig often illustrates this with a powerful story about a donkey that fell into a pit. As people walked by and saw the situation, they decided that there was no way to rescue the donkey, so they thought, let's just bury him and make it quick. They started shoveling dirt into the pit. Each time a shovelful of dirt landed on the donkey, he would shake it off and step up. More dirt came, and he shook it off and stepped up again. It might have been the 1,000th or 10,000th shovelful, 
but eventually, the pit became shallower and shallower until the donkey was able to walk out. This story shows the importance of resilience. No matter how tough things get, whether you're facing financial troubles, health issues, or family problems, you need to shake it off and keep moving forward. It's not the time to quit or complain. Even when you're down, remember that we serve a God who specializes in comebacks. Quitting is easy, and that's why many people do it. But you are not one of those people. Micah 7 verse 8 reminds us, Rejoice not over me, O my enemy, for when I fall, I shall arise. You might get knocked down, but it's not the end. God will never declare it's over until you win. Proverbs 24 verse 16 says, A righteous man falls seven times but rises again. To overcome the devil, you only need to get up one more time than you've been knocked down. Keep getting up and never quit. The pain of giving up and the regret that follows is far greater than the pain of perseverance. God promises rewards for those who endure. The key is to keep showing up. You cannot keep a person down who refuses to stay down. It's one thing to be knocked down, but the real challenge is to refuse to remain down. There are people here who can testify that, although they've been knocked down, God continually provides the strength, energy, and power to get back up. Every time something or someone has brought them down, God has lifted them up again. Life isn't about avoiding being knocked down, it's about refusing to stay down. You've come too far to give up now. You need to keep fighting because, in his name, there is nothing you can't overcome. If you're feeling like giving up, I understand that temptation, but don't do it. Remember, God is on your side, just as he told Peter he was praying for him so that his faith would remain strong. Let God be your source of encouragement. He is in your corner, and with his support, you will emerge victorious. Imagine you're walking through a dense fog where your vision is limited, and every step is an act of trust. This is much like our walk with God, a journey through the unknown, relying solely on his guidance and not our limited perception. Today, I will share with you profound insights into walking by faith and not by sight or emotions. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends in this world, we are often tempted to rely on what we can see and feel. Yet, let us embrace the wisdom of Hebrews 11 verse 1, which declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This profound truth anchors us in the midst of life's ever-changing tides. It calls us to place our trust in God's plan, even when it stretches beyond our understanding or visible horizon. Let us walk in faith, irrespective of the shifting sands of our circumstances and feelings. As we journey together, we will explore seven key insights that will help us navigate this path of faith. These insights will deepen our trust in the Lord and guide us in aligning our steps with His divine will. Number one, walking by faith, not your emotions. Life often presents us with a roller coaster of emotions, and you know what? But our emotions can be misleading, taking us on a path that deviates from God's plan. The story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 offers a powerful lesson on this. After a significant victory at Mount Carmel, Elijah plunged into despair and fear due to Jezebel's threats. Despite having just witnessed God's mighty power, his emotions in that moment overshadowed his faith. This reminds us that even the strongest among us can falter if we lean too heavily on our emotional responses. My friends, in moments of emotional turmoil, let us hold on to the truth found in Psalm 56 verse 3, which says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. This scripture not only addresses our fears, but also our broader emotional responses. It teaches us that our faith should not be swayed by the ever-changing tides of our emotions. Instead, we are called to place our trust in decisions in the steadfast love of God, not in the temporary whispers of our feelings. Walking by faith and not by emotions requires us to cultivate a deep sense of discernment and reliance on the Holy Spirit. It means that in moments of fear, anxiety, or even overwhelming joy, we pause and align these feelings with God's Word. It's about understanding that emotions are part of our human experience, 
but they should not be the compass that guides our decisions or our belief in God's promises. Therefore, as we navigate the challenges of life, let us seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let us train ourselves to recognize when our emotions are leading us astray and stand in faith. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit and turn to prayer and scripture for truth in moments when our emotions threaten to overwhelm our faith. Let us remember Elijah and learn to rise above our immediate feelings, trusting in God's eternal plan and unfailing love. My friends, let us strive to walk by faith, grounded in the truth of God's word, rather than being swayed by the fleeting and often deceptive nature of our emotions. In doing so, we find stability and clarity anchored in the love and wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Number two, trusting in God's timing over our own. The concept of time often perplexes us. We live in a world that revolves around schedules, deadlines, and immediate gratification. This fast-paced life can sometimes make the virtue of patience seem like a forgotten relic. Yet, in the realm of faith, time takes on a different dimension. As we ponder on the story of Noah, we see a man who operated not on conventional time, but on God's time. Building an ark with no cloud in the sky, Noah's faith was not rooted in what he could see or understand. It was anchored in the promises of God. In this context, Isaiah 55 verse 8 echoes profoundly, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. This verse isn't just about God's higher thinking, but also about his perfect timing. Noah's steadfast obedience to a task that appeared illogical on the surface teaches us an invaluable lesson about the true nature of unwavering faith. Our journey is often marred by our impatience and our lack of trust in God's timing. We want things to happen now, forgetting that God's timeline is always perfect, even when it seems delayed by our standards. Trusting in God's timing means embracing a season of waiting. It involves understanding that our immediate desires may not align with God's ultimate plan for us. This waiting is not passive, it's an active, faithful anticipation. It's about preparing our hearts, nurturing our faith, and staying committed to God's course, even when the horizon seems distant. Noah's faithfulness during his season of waiting, building an ark amidst doubt and ridicule, is a testament to the strength that comes from trusting in God's timing. Therefore, as we navigate through our lives, let us seek to embody Noah's unwavering faith. When faced with decisions, big or small, let us pause and consider God's timing. This perspective shift is not about inaction. It's about aligning our actions with God's divine schedule. In moments of impatience and uncertainty, let us recall Noah's Ark, a symbol of trust and obedience in God's perfect timing. God guiding us to a deeper understanding of faith. Number three, surrendering personal ambitions to divine will. At times, our personal ambitions and dreams seem to chart our course. Yet, God's plan calls us to a different path. The story of Jonah vividly illustrates this struggle. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, a task he initially ran from because it conflicted with his personal desires and prejudices. His journey, including the extraordinary experience inside the belly of a great fish, symbolizes the internal conflict we face when our plans clash with God's. As we reflect on Jonah's story, we are reminded of Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. This verse teaches us about the supremacy of God's will over our own ambitions. Jonah's eventual decision to obey God despite his initial reluctance demonstrates the importance of surrendering our plans to God, trusting that his plans are not only different but better. Surrendering to God's will often mean stepping outside our comfort zones and confronting our deepest fears and prejudices. For Jonah, going to Nineveh was not just about a physical journey, but also a spiritual transformation. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength and faith, acknowledging that our personal ambitions must align with God's higher purpose. Therefore, in our lives, when we find our ambitions clashing with God's call, let us remember Jonah's journey. It's a call to introspection and realignment, a reminder that our ultimate purpose is found not in the pursuit of our ambitions, but in aligning them with God's divine plan. 
Surrendering doesn't mean giving up on our dreams. It means reshaping them to fit into the grand narrative God has written for us. Number 4. Overcoming Doubts with God's Assurance Doubts are a natural part of our faith journey. They challenge our beliefs and can lead to spiritual growth if navigated wisely. The story of Thomas, often labeled as Doubting Thomas, offers a unique perspective on this. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas struggled with doubt, unable to believe without seeing Jesus with his own eyes. His story is a reflection of our own moments of doubt, where we see tangible proof of God's presence and plan. In these moments, Jesus' words to Thomas resonate deeply, as recorded in John 20 verse 29, where he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This verse is not just a rebuke of doubt, but an invitation to a deeper faith, a faith that believes in God's plan even when it's not visibly evident. Thomas's eventual declaration of faith upon seeing Jesus reminds us that our doubts, when surrendered to God, can lead to a stronger conviction in his plan for us. Overcoming doubt requires an intentional cultivation of faith and trust in God. It involves seeking him through his word, prayer, and the fellowship of believers. Thomas's story teaches us that it's okay to have questions or uncertainties, but we should not let them distance us from God. Instead, we should bring them to him, allowing his truth to guide and reassure us. As we face our doubts, let's be encouraged by Thomas's journey from skepticism to faith. Let us embrace our doubts not as hindrances, but as stepping stones to a deeper understanding and trust in God's plan. In our quest for answers, let us remain open to the ways God reveals His will and purpose for our lives. Number 5. Embracing Transformation Through God's Guidance Personal transformation is often a key aspect of aligning with God's plan. The transformation of Saul to Paul is one of the most striking examples of this. Saul, initially a persecutor of Christians, experienced a radical transformation on the road to Damascus. This was not just a change of heart, but a complete redirection of his life's purpose. Guided by God's hand, Paul's transformation, as he later became known, was marked by a total surrender to God's will. As he states in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This profound declaration highlights the essence of embracing God's plan. It's about letting go of our old selves and allowing God to reshape our identity and purpose according to His divine will. Embracing transformation through God's guidance requires humility and a willingness to let go of our former ways. For Paul, this meant abandoning his previous beliefs and practices to fully embrace the teachings of Christ. This kind of transformation can be challenging, as it often requires us to step into unfamiliar territory and adopt new ways of thinking and living. Therefore, as we seek to align with God's plan, let us be open to the transformative work He wants to do in us. Like Paul, let us be willing to undergo the changes that come with following Christ. This transformation is not a loss of self, but a discovery of our true identity and purpose in God. It's a journey from who we are to who God intends us to be. Number 6. Persevering in Faith Despite Challenges The journey of faith is often marked by challenges and trials. These moments test our perseverance and commitment to God's plan. The story of the prophet Hosea is a profound example of unwavering faith amidst adversity. Hosea was called to marry an unfaithful woman, Gomer, as a symbol of God's love for an unfaithful Israel. This difficult path was not a reflection of personal failure, but a profound illustration of God's unwavering commitment and love. Hosea's life reminds us of James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse highlights the virtue of perseverance. Enduring challenges in our faith journey is not about silently bearing pain, but also about remaining steadfast in our trust in God's plan. Even when it leads us through difficult and incomprehensible paths, persevering in faith requires us to look beyond our current struggles and focus on the greater purpose that God has for us. Hosea's unwavering commitment to God, despite the pain and humiliation he endured, 
serves as a powerful testament to the strength that comes from divine assurance. It's about understanding that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. As we face our own challenges, let us draw inspiration from Hosea's perseverance. Let us remember that our trials are temporary, but the lessons and strength we gain from them have eternal significance. In times of hardship, let us cling to the promise of the crown of life, persevering in faith and trusting in the unfailing love and plan of God. Number 7. Walking in Faith, Not by Sight The essence of walking by faith is beautifully captured in the life of Abraham. Called to leave his homeland and go to an unknown land, Abraham's journey was marked by faith in God's promises, even when they seemed distant and unattainable. He believed in God's promise of a son despite his and Sarah's old age and was willing to sacrifice his promised son, Isaac, trusting in God's plan above his understanding. Abraham's life resonates with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This principle defines our Christian walk, a journey based not on visible evidence but on the assurance of God's promises. Abraham's willingness to step into the unknown, trusting in God's word, sets a powerful example for us. Walking by faith, not by sight, means trusting in God's promises even when they defy our logic or timelines. It involves letting go of our need for visible proof and relying on the certainty of God's word. Abraham's journey, filled with ups and downs, was a testament to the fact that faith is not a straight path, but a series of steps taken in trust and obedience. Therefore, as we walk our own journey of faith, let us be inspired by Abraham's example. Let us embrace the uncertainties and challenges with faith, knowing that our sight is limited but God's vision is infinite. In every step, in every decision, let us walk by faith, holding on to the promises of God, assured that His plan for us is perfect and His timing is impeccable. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are mighty and majestic. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. You are the rock of ages, the great I am, the one who is, who is, and who is to come. Your wisdom is unsearchable, and your power is like no other. In your presence, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord. I lift your name on high, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father, for your manifold blessings in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your unfailing love, your boundless grace, and your merciful kindness that greets me each morning. Your faithfulness is my shield and buckler. Thank you for being my guide, my comforter, and my steadfast hope in times of uncertainty. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I have leaned on my understanding, for moments when my faith faltered and I walked by sight. I ask for your forgiveness, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing all resentment and hurt. For in forgiveness, there is freedom and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I rebuke every spirit of doubt, fear, and confusion. I bind any influence that contradicts your will for my life, and I ask for wisdom, clarity, and discernment. Lord, I trust in your unfailing provision. You are my provider, and I hold on to your promise to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread and my daily benefits. Heavenly Father, I pray that your hand of healing reaches out to touch me and my loved ones, bringing restoration and wholeness in every area where we need your divine healing. I pray against every attack of the enemy, be it on our health, our minds, or our spirits. Protect us, Lord, from all harm and keep us under the shadow of your wings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. Lord, I pray for your blessings upon my life and the lives of my loved ones. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, united in our desire to follow your plan and purpose for our lives. 
Guide us, Lord, as we navigate through life's challenges and decisions. Help us to embrace your will, overcome our doubts, and find joy and fulfillment in your divine plan. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us with the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May we, like Abraham, trust in your promises, even when they seem distant. Help us to persevere through trials, knowing that you are refining us for a greater purpose. May our lives be a testament to your faithfulness and love. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we walk by faith, not by sight or our emotions. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen.